Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Higher Learning Thought Warriors. It is I, Van Lathan. It's I, Rachel Lindsay. I see that you've come around on the it is I, I. I. Can I do mine over again? Mm-hmm. It's me. It's me, mm-hmm. Rachel Lindsay. No, it is <laughs> I, Rachel Lindsay. I, 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 I see it. <laughs> I see that you are, you're down with it now. Rachel, how are you? I saw you. We were in a little pre-show. You took a big swig of wine. Are you having a tough and, day? And I would let, like for it to be known that I haven't had a glass of wine in a while on mm, the podcast. Right. Yeah, it's been a tough... I mean, since I've been in LA, I've been nonstop trying to get used to a new city, new mm-hmm. jobs, and it's just been a day. It's been a week. A week. How's that, how's that going, getting used to it? How's it going since the, the ash has literally blotted out the sun? I guess I haven't, I've been inside like working, working, working nonstop mm. that I haven't seen it. I was talking to someone today that said it smells like smoke outside. I haven't Terrible. even. Terrible. By the way, you like, you, I, I parked outside on the street, mm-hmm. ash all over oh the car. Oh my God, I saw that. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that's what that was. Yeah, it's ash all over the car. You can't literally, the, the, we could really use some rain because the forecast in LA, the skies are completely clear. What you see outside is not an overcast. Oh my that's, god! That's smoke. Like the 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 the, you know, there's not a cloud in the sky right now. What you see outside right now is that's from the fires. I had no so idea. Maybe the winds will come through because we're supposed to have some real big Santa Anas. I saw that. Maybe the winds will come through and maybe swirl some of it away. But it's a really interesting. It's like living on a different planet almost. It's like the Martian or something like that. It's crazy. Well, now you like open my eyes to a whole new thing. I thought it was just an overcast day. I mm-hmm. thought my car was dirty. Right. I, no. I I really didn't know this. Wow. No, 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 no. You need to know. Don't jog outside. Go inside. Do you have a uh, at your building? Do you have a like a place you can work out? Yeah, but it's closed. Oh, it's closed. Ours is open. Oh, well, ours Niggas is closed. But I normally walk copper, but I didn't today. Took him to daycare, so that's why I have I haven't been outside. Mm, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, look, I, we got to start the uh, podcast on a down note. All right. We gotta start the podcast on a down note. What? Why? Why? Why more, do we have to do that? More people are getting at Rachel Lindsay in Van so Lathan's DMs. This. People are hitting but me up. But why do they come to you? I'll tell they you don't why. come to me. I tell you why. I'll tell if you, you why. If, let, let me tell y'all something. If you wanna, if you want, if you got something to say, slide in my DMs. Come talk to me. <laughs> Stop tattling the van. Come talk. Like, I'm, <gasps> I'm about it. You wanna, so, you wanna DM me? Go ahead. So look, let me know what you guy, gotta say. This guy's name is. Adam Freed Good. Okay. Adam okay. Freed Good. So it's a dude. All right. It's a dude. All right. I'm going to read the whole thing. Adam okay. Freed Good has a bone to pick with Rachel Lindsay. What's new? All right. Yo, what up, Van? Huge fan. I listen to pretty much every episode of Higher Learning and Way Down in the Hole the day they come out. Today, I watched two different pieces of content with you and your good friend, Big Rach. While I'm also a huge fan of hers, I need to get some clarification on the major hypocrisy I saw from her today. Was hoping you could ask her on the pod Friday. I want to preface this, okay? I'm going to preface it with I tried to reach out to Rachel directly, (laughs) but her DMs aren't open to the public like yours are. That's not true. That's what he said. I think he's talking about Twitter. This is Twitter. Oh, I don't, I, yeah. Maybe they yeah, aren't. You don't even know. You don't even know. You don't I, even I don't know. know. I truly don't, don't know. know. Oh, he says, or maybe I just fucked up, when in that case, which in that case, my bad. I'm definitely not trying to call her out to you uh, <laughs> around her, though. That's what he says. But. That's what he says. <laughs> he says, okay, are you ready for his beef? Are you ready for Adam Free Goods beef? Come on. Come on. Okay. This is Adam Free Goods beef. Okay. So, I listened to Higher Learning today, and I think her disdain for Selena Powell and no jet her and her no jumper podcast was pretty obvious. She clearly believes these women are ex, or were exploiting the men they were talking about by revealing their personal sexual encounters on the podcast. Later today, though, I happened to come across her show Ghosted and decided to watch for the first time. Mm-hmm. On this show, her and her co-hosts cyber stalk someone by digging through their social media pages and reaching out to their friends to get in touch with them when they purposefully didn't want the person to speak to the person Rachel was trying to help. 
They pretty much stalked him until he agreed to come on national television and reveal his most personal sexual secret. Just like Odell Beckham, their story was revealed to the world without their consent. If I'm being completely honest, I think what Rachel did is not just similar to Selena Powell's podcast, was actually way worse. On the podcast, I, it was just telling someone, to, it was just someone telling their own personal story unsolicited by anyone. No one forced her to reveal that about herself and OBJ. Rachel actively forced you got damn tyrant this person to believe to reveal his sexual secret to the world even though he clearly didn't want to tell anyone i don't think that what this person did to the woman rachel was trying to help was right at all he was a huge asshole but he didn't do anything illegal and didn't deserve to be exploited on national television for mtv's game i would love to hear what rachel feels the differences are between the two again huge fan and will always keep listening and then here's my response <laughs> Isn't that a compliment sandwich if I ever heard one? That's a big compliment Check sandwich. Check this out, Adam. Okay, hold oh, on, hold oh, on. Still you, going? You no, we gotta, you got to hear my response. This is my response. Oh, okay. To, this is my response. <laughs> this is my response to, to the tweet. Ooh. Yo. Oh, shit. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. La, 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 la. I'm giddy. You a genius. You smart. You the best. Don't disrespect Rachel. That's like that's like that's, <laughs> the, like that's that's the whole thing. Okay, this is this is gonna be real simple. Real Adam. simple, Rachel. Adam. Adam. Adam Freed Good. Adam Freed Good. Adam Freed Good. Excuse me. Let me get your whole name right. I, I honestly don't know which episode of Ghosts you're talking about, but I don't know. I might be spoiling something for you. Everybody who's on the show agrees to be on the show. Boom. Which I the knew. By the way, Adam, if you're on the show. You had to sign a release. To you got to sign a bitch. release. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I mean, we might, we, we honestly, as hosts, may not know if the ghost or whoever is going to show up. That is true. But if they pop up their face on screen, their voice, any part of their likeness, they have signed a, an agreement saying that they, that we can film them or record them. Damn, sorry, Adam. sorry, Adam. They Adam, agree. Not, There's Adam, no exploitation there. But Adam, you, you are right in reading how I feel about Selena. That is Adam, correct. Adam, I'm not gonna lie, bro. Shout out to Adam Free, good man. Shout out to Adam. Adam, you kind of just, you kind of got fucked over a little bit. No, I mean, just like I, I be like Adam in real life. That was dope. And by the way, Adam, nice guy. Me and Adam went back and forth. Adam Aww. had something. You know, Adam had something. He thought he thought he had you, Rach. He thought he had but, you, but, but I got to be honest, Adam, kind of a figure four leg lock of logic right there, brother. I don't know what I to say. I Ric Flair up in here. Listen, listen, I appreciate, you know, like him calling me out, especially because <laughs> hi hypocrisy, that's like a big word, a hypocrite. I'm like, what the hell did I do? But Damn, I hate Rich. to burst your bubble on that. Old boy was not exploited. He agreed to be out there. He agreed to tell his business. Uh, we simply just asked a question. <clears throat> Put it to bed. Listen, if you guys have any beefs about me, send them to Rachel. Yeah, please. Ra Rachel can please them. send them to me. And also, you can catch them. Ghosted Love Gone Missing on MTV <laughs> Wednesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What's the logo for Ghosted again? What's the logo? Uh, like that's a, a good question. You don't know what the logo it's is? Like, it used to be like a like a dot dot like somebody was a oh like that's good that's good like but you're waiting about, on somebody to write like they're typing but it never what pops about, up. What about I have an idea. Oh, I have an idea. What about Casper? What about Casper as the mascot? Sometimes the feel, ghost isn't friendly. Casper was a friendly ghost. Damn, was he friendly? Do you know that? Like, did the you theme, see the cat in the theme song? But did you see the? Did you see the? Because look, here's the thing about a friendly ghost, right? A friendly ghost, right? It really it doesn't make any sense. That, that like, that's an oxymoron, like a friendly no, ghost. A, no, it's a not. Ghost is a, a ghost is a tortured soul that can't move on to like the next plane. So like, um, have you seen the movie Ghost? Uh, yeah. But he was not. Well, yeah, I guess he was tortured. I was gonna say he was friendly, but you're right. He was, he was tortured. extremely tortured. And by he the way, tortured. I can make. I, I can make. I by the way, I can make a compelling argument that Patrick Swayze's character in Ghost. Mm -hmm is the true villain of the movie. I've always thought this. 
Oh my gosh. Have y'all done this? Have you done this little rewatchables yet? I haven't done it yet. But if you look at it, what he really did the entire movie was harass a black woman into doing his bidding. <laughs> Put her life in danger. <laughs> that is okay? true. Put that her is true. life in danger. She wasn't doing nothing. And then didn't even give her the money. Think about all the bullshit that he put her through. This is true. Think about all the bullshit that he put her through. Like, remember the point where he was, like, when they, they took all the money that they had embezzled? Mm -hmm. And she's sitting there. You think she gonna get, like, broke off for having her life? She got crazy ass uh, Tim Daly coming after her, sending henchmen after her, the whole right. nine. He don't even break her off with no cheese. She gets nothing. The only thing she got was tortured by him to further his white privilege agenda of getting his woman back. Mm -hmm. By the way, toxic masculinity. Ooh, you gonna hold on man. to your woman even when you're dead? You gonna hold on to her even when you're dead? You still, like, you're that possessive? I say, I say Sam Wheat is a villain. In that movie. <laughs> that I you really remember do. his full name in the movie. Wait, Sam wait, do you, Wheat. do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You're from, like, I feel like that's, yeah, yeah. It was like, Louisiana. you're from Louisiana. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wait. Okay, Casper, I think I saw in a Casper movie, Casper's like some kid who drowned or something like that. Was, I was oh my God, that. that's that's terrible. Are you sure? I think that's true. I'm pretty sure that's true. We have to fact check that. But somebody look at that. But I'm pretty sure in Casper, the movie, that made, they show how Casper That just made it like a, a very sad and in, in, in a creepy way. Like in the cartoon version, he wasn't but, that way. He's dead. No, but yeah, well, in, in, in the cartoon on, version, he's really cute. He looks like a little Pillsbury Doughboy, but he's but with the sheep. He's dead. Okay? So it doesn't matter. He's a kid. He's a dead kid ghost. But that's okay. how it came <laughs> off in the cartoon. I don't know what to tell you. He was like an imaginary so, friend in the cartoon. But I got to think about the real child, version. Child, dead child. Are you fact ghost. check that? Fact check, fact check that. that. I'm pretty fact sure check. that they show how Casper died in the movie. And why I the hell remember. was he friendly? That's like, I feel I sorry know. for him. I don't know, man. I don't know. What's anyway, the next? Uh, what's, the, what's the first okay, topic? First topic. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, one of my homies just went viral. Um, uh, this is the homie, Killer Mike. Killer Mike, if you guys don't know who Killer Mike is, Killer Mike is, uh, to me, one of the best rappers in the world. I say Killer Mike is one of the five best rappers in the world right now. No bullshit. Shout out to Run The Jewels. Shout out to LP and Killer Mike. Every single Run The Jewels project hits absolutely hard. And he's been that way. He's been ill since the beginning. Killer Mike is also an incredibly sharp, engaging, introspective, and learned political mind, political thinker. He acted as, I wouldn't say a surrogate, but uh, he acted as sort of a, he was part of the Bernie Sanders campaign. Maybe he was a surrogate. I'm not sure what his official role was, uh, but he was very outspoken in his support for Bernie Sanders, not just in this election, but in the last election before this as well. Um, and he's courted political controversy before. He very famously went on to the NRA's pop platform and had, a conversation with Coleon Noir, uh, NRA guy who I had on my podcast. Shout out to Coleon Noir. Fuck the NRA. Coleon no longer works for them. Uh, but our conversation was about black gun ownership, which is something that Killer Mike is very into. I remember that conversation, having it on the NRA's platform, was very controversial. He made controversial news today because he went to meet with Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. Killer Mike is from Atlanta. He is a small business owner in Atlanta. He is a political operative, motivator, sort of a thinker there in Atlanta. And he went and talked to Governor Kemp. Now, don't know specifically what was discussed. I did see something about small businesses. Yeah. Uh, I have, um, I'm pretty sure that if Mike went up there to talk, something was on the agenda about ways to help the community and ways to help small black business owners in the community. And that's probably why Mike went up to speak to the governor. I haven't spoken to Mike yet. There are things that people do not like about this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had Stacey Abrams on last week. Mm -hmm. Stacey Abrams contends that Brian Kemp there in Georgia, uh, both when he was running and now is engaged in wholesale voter suppression, trying to suppress specifically the black vote in Georgia and black voter turnout in Georgia to make sure that he holds on to his uh, governorship and also 
that President Trump can win Georgia, which is a very important state uh, in this election. So right away when the pictures of Mike uh, going to see Governor Kemp came out, people were upset. It trended on Twitter. Do you, Rachel, have a problem with Killer Mike visiting the governor there in Georgia? No, I don't. Um, <clears throat> because of all the things that you just started out talking about, when you discussed, when you introduced this topic, right? Killer Mike has a long history of being supportive of the black community and trying to fight for us. So yeah. you have to assume, even if you weren't privy to the details of that conversation, that he didn't neglect that just because he went to talk to somebody that we don't support or we don't agree with. And I think it's very, yeah. it's an ignorant thought that there has to be this idea that meeting with someone is the equivalent to supporting them. The fact that we're already going to label Killer Mike with that just because he went to go sit down and talk to Governor Kemp is not fair. Um, he did tweet that some of the issues that he was talking about is that blacks in Georgia have more than 2% of state contracts while making up 35% of the state. He also mm -hmm. talked about black men and black boys getting free trade school versus building more jails for them. Right. So these he are some of the owns issues. A yeah. So these are some mm -hmm. of the issues that he went to talk about. And I just think it's I just think we just live in a society where people are so easy, so willing to jump and harp on things because it's trending or because everybody's doing it rather than really logically thinking about it and sifting through the facts. There's no way that Killer Mike forgot who he was. I'm just going to assume when he went and took that meeting, you might not like Governor Kemp. We all believe we believe when we've talked about it here on the podcast that he cheated his way to win that race. But that doesn't mean that he, he holds that office. So you still have to continue to fight for our rights, even though that is having a discussion with someone that you don't support or that you don't believe in. And I think that that's what killer Mike was doing. And I'm just shocked that he's getting so much backlash for having a meeting to fight for us. People are calling him a sellout for that reason. So what is he supposed to do? Okay. We don't, none of us like the fact that governor Kemp is there. We know that he has refused to have a mask mandate for the coronavirus when the coronavirus is disproportionately affecting black and brown communities. It's mm. hindering us. We know that we know that he. Voter suppression is an issue in the state of Georgia, and the, the federal government has refused to get involved and has left it up to the states, and he's not doing anything about it. Recently this year, there was an issue with voter suppression in the state of Georgia. Maybe that's what Killer Mike was going to talk about as well. But the fact that we're just supposed to sit on Twitter and tweet about it and be mad when Killer Mike is going into his office and actually taking action and doing something about it is ludicrous to me. I cannot believe that people are harping on him for this when he's done nothing but stand up and support our community. Yeah. So look, uh, any calls uh, or any notions that Mike is a sellout, a coon, whatever, dumb. That's not a thing. That's just not a thing. Okay. Um, I talk to Mike often. What Mike's belief is, is that, you know, he, he says something and what he says is that he says, black people cannot continue to fight over who has the better master. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and what he means by that, and, and he, we, we tried to have him here, but he obviously has a very busy schedule. So it was fuck you to higher learning. So appreciate that. Mike. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, what he basically means is that <clears throat> his belief is that, He's a policy-oriented guy. He believes that people on the left don't really give a fuck. People on the right don't really give a fuck. And when we argue these things, we argue over who has the better masters. And I understand that. I get that. I understand that he's not wrong about uh, black people's need to be, to answer to th themselves politically and culturally mm -hmm. and own their businesses, protect themselves. <clears throat> he's a very, he's a big proponent of, uh, of gun rights. He's a two-way guy. He's the son of a police officer. So there are a lot of things that Mike looks at in different ways than a lot of the people who are, you know, probably cursing his name today. I will say one thing, though. While the who Mike is, is in no way in question to me, I do question the tactic and is what I would have loved to, to, to discuss with him. Because here's the thing with me. So there is... No doubt about the fact that Brian Kemp is hurting black people, right? Right. Okay. So Brian Kemp is hurting black people. 
He's suppressing black votes. He stole a gubernatorial election by doing it in 2018, and he's going to attempt to do it now, Mm -hmm. right? He's hurting black people. Okay. So the question then becomes, what do you have to do or how do you negotiate talking to, polling with, sitting down with someone who you know is hurting black people? Okay. Now, the question, the answer to that is, Van, who isn't hurting black people? And that's what a lot of, you know, are the Democrats not hurting black people? Are the Republicans not hurting black people? Are, who isn't hurting black people? What I would say to that is this, is that if I was to go to the White House or to the governor's mansion or to any of those things, I would be wary that Brian Kemp and the governor's office there were using the photo op as a weapon Absolutely. To, to, to drive home the fact that, look, we like black people. Here's Killer Mike. Okay. Um, so here's Killer Mike. We like black people. You see me meeting with Killer Mike. I invited the great big uh, uh, voice into my government. I have no problem talking to him. Here's Killer Mike. We love black people, which make might, which to some people might make things, oh, that Governor Kemp is all right, right? So that Governor Kemp is okay. So they now have a more open heart to Governor Kemp. All right. Uh, whereas Killer Mike could go in there and talk to Governor Kemp and walk out of there with nothing. Now, I'm not saying that he will. I don't know if there was anything signed or anything done or even anything promised. We don't know yet. That will be a sort of, that'll come out uh, as we get more information. But if that wasn't the case, if you don't get anything out of it, then the only thing that you do is empower someone who's hurting black people. So, and this is the and, and this is the same thing with a visit to President Trump or anything. If you're going to Deontay Wilder went to the White House, mm-hmm. heavyweight champion of the world. Yes. When Deontay Wilder went to the White House, it was to sign for President Trump to sign a pardon for Jack Johnson. Uh one of the, the black heavyweight Jack Johnson who was bogusly accused, uh, bogusly uh convicted on some shit a long time ago. He went there for the president to actually wipe away a historical ill that had happened. So I have no problem with Deontay Wilder going there to do that. Deontay Wilder going there to ask the president to pardon Jack Johnson, a little bit different to me. And the reason is, is because you don't know if he's going to do it. And if you go there and you, and you sit for the picture, the picture becomes a weapon and maybe you don't get what you want. So if, if Killer Mike was there in the government, once again, Lee Merritt went to the White House when right. they actually, when the president gave a bullshit executive order uh, about policing. Th- that's what he was there for. Lee Merritt yeah. can't not go to the White House when the president actually makes an overture based upon something he's been trying to get done. So I guess that's what I, those are the only questions what? I would have. And and that's why I wish we could have had Killer Mike here, and hopefully maybe we can get him on on another episode, because um, those were questions that I had. But at the same time, it's like okay, well this well let me ask you this question too: Did Killer Mike post that he went to go visit Brian Kemp? Because I saw Brian Kemp's post. Mm-hmm. Did Killer Mike tweet it, or what? Did it only come from I, the I, governor's I, you know office? Because that's I'll the only one right, I saw. I'll look right now. Oh no, he did post it on Instagram. So in the caption, Mike is really talking about sort of what one of his homies uh, had to say about the meeting and how much it meant to him. And Mike says he looks forward to helping Georgia increase its 2% government government state part uh, contract participation participation to 10 to 15%. I guess this has to do with uh, sort of community initiatives and things that are going on in Georgia. Um, he says he hopes that, he's, that this is the first of many real and frank converse, uh, conversations, and he thanked the governor and his staff. Okay, so this is his post. All right, I I will agree. I think that everything that you said, that was the question I had. I only saw what was coming from the governor's office on Twitter. I did not know if Killer Mike as well had posted about his visit, because um, mm-hmm. then I would have had a different take if he did not post it. But I do understand what you're saying about the picture op. Um, right. because that was one of the questions I had about being used as a prop if we had Killer Mike on the show. But at the same time, I'm, I guess I'm conflicted because 
you know, like you, you still have to go in and have these discussions, even if you don't know what the outcome is going to be at the end of the day. You can't be mad from a distance. You can't do nothing and talk. You have to go into these offices. You have to go into have these meetings, at least to try to get something done, even if you don't know at the end of the day that he's going to help you or not. So for for from Killer Mike's perspective, I understand that. Now, would I have posed for a picture? Probably not, because it does seem like the office of of Governor Kemp is circulating that and using that to show that this is somebody that's regarded uh, a, a certain way in the black community. And I was able to, he came to visit me and we were able to have a good discussion trying to say, like you're saying, yeah, well, he's, he not supports me, but he's at least willing to have a decent conversation with me as if he backs him in a way, you know what I mean? Like a prop. I get that. I yeah. get that. But I still believe that those conversations have to be had because what, what, here's my question to you. What do you do then? Right. There are other ways, like obviously Governor Kemp does not need to be the governor of the state of Georgia. And that's only going to happen if people actively uh, speak out against him and then go to the polls and vote against him. That's Mm -hmm. that's obviously one way to fight him. But other than that, he is currently the governor of the state and you're Mm -hmm. fighting for certain things to happen in your state that benefit your community. So how else do you get it done when this person's the governor of your state? So that's what I get. I get what Killer Mike was doing. I, I, get might it not too. I might not oppose for the picture, though. Yeah, I, I get it, too. But here's the thing, though. Do you think that in terms of initiatives to help small black businesses and things like that, that there are uh, legislatures in Georgia there that are working towards those things? Sure. Why isn't Governor Kemp talking to them? Or more to the point, let me and put it may- this way. Let, let, may, 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 more to the point, let me put it this way. Why isn't Governor Kemp posting pictures talking to them? That, listen, I'm not going to even argue with you on that. Right. On so, the, so, I so, get it. Right. I do so, think they used it. Used so, him so, that. well, so, so my purpose is, so, so my point is this. There are black people there in Georgia whose job it is to talk to the governor about issues like this. Mm-hmm. Well, Killer Mike is, don't get me wrong, Killer Mike's job is not just to be a rapper, rap, rap. Mike is on it all. Yeah. Mike is, you can trust Mike. But, when Mike walks into there, or not just him, when anybody walks into there, into there, right? When Jim Brown goes to the White House, when Kanye West goes to the White House, when any of these things happen, right? Steve Harvey goes to there. The question is, all the things that they went and talked to Donald Trump about, um, Kanye actually was able to have some success, I guess, or Kim was, I guess, or Van Jones was with the First Step Act. <laughs> but when 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 Steve Harvey and all of those guys went there to talk about all the things they want to do economically and all that stuff like that, did Trump do any of that? I mean, I'm, I'm asking. Well, let, like, like, let him tell it. Yeah, he's well, done more no, for black no, folks all, than any other he's, president. He's talking about unemployment, right? But like, right, that's any, it. It's the only stat they Are there get. any specific initiatives that were enacted to invest in the small black businesses or no. anything? Like, has, did any of that no. stuff happen? Has it happened? So then what happens is what you end up doing is you end up normalizing somebody. Like, so I don't if we're agree talk, with if, that. If, 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 we're, if we're talking about you go to the governor's office, right? First of all, let's talk about what the allegations of Brian Kemp are, uh, are against Brian Kemp. They're saying that Brian Kemp is actively taking the vote away from black people in Georgia. That's uh, not a small allegation. That is reducing their citizenship. That's depowering black people. I, That's a tremendous amount of harm. So to me, if you're gonna go and talk to somebody like this. This is not just for Mike. This is for anybody. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go and talk to somebody like that, then you have to, you have to be getting what you need from them. You have to be offsetting that harm in some sort of way. Like for right now, I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't take a picture with Joe Biden. I, I wouldn't. Understand. Joe Biden has done a lot of harm to the African-American community. Now, whereas I believe in Kamala Harris and I believe in the choice and I believe in all of these things right now, I can't put my foot on the gas and 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 act like I'm all gung ho about that. I think there's a way to do it. And this is what I and this is so like I'm not disagreeing with you on this because I feel Mm -hmm. like I I, I'm not against him going and having a conversation. What I wish he would have done is specifically talked about like because one of the questions I had for him is, did you expect this backlash? Did you did you expect people were. Okay, yeah. and then I'm ready my, for the, he, Mike. Mike ain't no. But Mike, my follow. Mike but my this. follow. But my follow up question is: 
if you anticipated this type of backlash, you know what what black people feel against Governor Kemp and why. You should have said something about if you had discussions about voter suppression, because he didn't mention that in a social media post. Like, I want to know that. There's no way that I would go talk to Governor Kemp and not mention that as well. If I'm mm-hmm. repre- being representative of the black community and a citizen of the state of Georgia, I would want to talk about what the allegations are against you, which, I mean, I, I'm using the word allegations to be nice, but I would want to talk about how I feel like you have been detrimental to my community and you still are doing things that are detrimental. He needed to say that. Killer Mike needed to say that if he had those conversations. Do you know what I mean? That's what I would have wanted from him. And I know we weren't privy to every single thing he talked about, but if he did not talk to him about that, then it was a missed opportunity. So, So here's the thing. One of Mike's biggest goals or is he's also challenges conventional thinking on something. The conventional thinking is we can't work with these people. We can't do this. We can't do that. And the Democrats are on our side and the Republicans aren't. He's, he challenges the conventional thinking on that. He challenges the conventional thinking on how black people should build communities, um, how all people in America should build communities uh, build businesses, protect themselves and all of that. So he's going to challenge you. He's going to challenge you by reading things you haven't read, by being in rooms you're not in, by doing all of those things. And I get that. Like everything that people are saying about him online is, is untrue. As far as right. Mike is this and Mike is that and Mike, he knew exactly what he do. He knew what was going on, whatever. The only thing that I question and you can have a healthy debate over it is the tactic. Is it like is is the tactic itself and the tactic itself as it relates to not a governor who's a republican and you disagree that you disagree on policy with to someone who is actively harming black people and if the argu- the kind of argument to that is the democrats are actively harming black people as well <laughs> we can have that discussion too but then it then then we have to discuss you know what it is that we're doing, what it is we're willing to accept, where it is that we're willing to go and and how it is we want to get to the finish line. But uh, no problem with talking to people who you disagree with, talking to people who you bitterly disagree with and uh, coming to a compromise. No problem with that or trying to work on behalf of your community. No problem with that. But if you're going to have somebody who over the next generation, over the next couple of years, is kind of try to have a stranglehold on Georgia politics and then maybe even national politics by suppressing black votes and now allow, not allowing black Americans to have the sort of representation that they want. That's, 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 that's quite a hurdle to jump for me. That's why I say I wish he would have taught one of, obviously we could have had him here, but I wish that in when he announced that he met with him, if he anticipated this backlash, that was going to be the biggest thing that people were going to say. It should he should have addressed it when he announced that he sat down and had this meeting, because good it is brother. a big issue. It is good, brother. Not only good, but one of the most important black men that we have right now. Whether you agree with him or disagree with him, one of the most important because we need somebody who just always in any place, he's a self-made millionaire, right? So he answers to no one. He's his own boss. You need somebody somewhere that in every single place they're in isn't afraid to not just step on toes. Mike ain't afraid to break them bitches. (laughs) But (laughs) but, uh, but yeah, so uh, no, uh, look, it's one of these things that you choose your own adventure there, there are people who are engagers. There are people who are resistors. The engagers engage. The resistors resist. That's the way that it goes. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, something interesting. Um, Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott. My quarterback. Cowboys quarterback. Your quarterback. My quarterback. He's your quarterback. You're a Dallas fan. So uh, a yeah. Fan. <laughs> you're a Cowboys fan. You like the Cowboys. Of course. I'm from Dallas. That's, I'm born and raised. Right. So you're born and raised in Dallas. You, you did with, like, so... It's been a long time since you guys won the Super Bowl. Okay, New Orleans. I don't know if you know Saints. <laughs> well, y'all Saints keep Orleans. almost getting there, but but not quite there. You know, okay. which one would you rather have? You get you get teased. 
You're yeah, almost there, but you don't quite get there. Can I ask a question? What's up? Which team has a more recent Super Bowl champion? The Saints That's or fine. the Cowboys? That's fine. Boys. That's fine. It's the Saints, clearly. But we're also America's team. And I'm yeah. not gonna and I'm not gonna change yeah. being a yeah. fan just because quite, it's been 20, 25 yeah, plus quite years. White America's team. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, ain't America's team. Get out of here with that America's team. Bullshit. Stop. All right, no, look, look, okay. Uh look, Dak Prescott came out um and talked about uh something that I feel like a lot of Americans have been going through. Dak Prescott, outstanding, outstanding quarterback for uh the Dallas Cowboys, uh talked about the fact that he suffered from uh, both anxiety and, dep- and, and depression, uh, yeah. due to this current time, this 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 era, this moment that we're in. Also, to add to everything else that was going on, crazy in this world, Dak Prescott uh, lost his brother. Lost his brother during this entire time. He said that he wanted to come out and talk about his anxiety and his depression because he wanted to be forthright about what it was that he was going through. So that anybody else that was going through the same thing could talk about it too. I have been on record. I'm not going to play my little violin for you guys again about some of the things that I uh, went through during the same time. So my heart goes out to Dak Prescott. This is the only time that I can ever remember rooting for a cowboy. I'm rooting for the mental health (laughs) and the safety of uh, Dak Prescott. Now, as soon as that Prescott came out with this, uh, Skip Bayless, good old Skip Bayless, the walking meat sack coward of a goddamn farce that is on Undisputed, came back with this. I'm going to ask our audience to go ahead and condemn me. If you choose as cold-blooded and insensitive on this issue. I have a deep compassion for clinical depression. But when it comes to the quarterback of an NFL team, you know this better than I do, it's the ultimate leadership position in sports. You are commanding an entire franchise. But when you're commanding a lot of young men and some older men, they are all looked and they're all looking to you to be their CEO. Excuse me. They, and they're all looking to you to be their CEO to be in charge of the football team. Because of all that, I don't have sympathy for him going public with uh with 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 I got depressed. I suffered depression early on in COVID to the point to where I couldn't even go work out. Look, he's the quarterback of America's team. Skip Bayless, by the way, from Dallas as well. Or from Oklahoma, I think. But he's actually Bill, from uh, Oklahoma, so stop. Right, but he <laughs> spent a lot of time in fan. Dallas. He's a he's a Dallas, Dallas fan. Cowboys fan, which is why it, I think. That's, I mean, it's it's the it's the most asinine take ever, and he knew it, which is why he prefaced it the way that he did. Now, I understand being on TV five days a week, doing a show where you're on hours a day, and there is pressure to have a hot take. Mm-hmm. Not this take. This ain't it. This mm-hmm. was absolutely ridiculous, and. It was shocking. I mean, I know Skip Bayless is known to speak out the side of his neck and to say crazy things, but the fact that he, it's almost, I thought we were past this. I thought we were past where we were putting people into a certain box, where we were stereotyping them or making them fit into a certain definition or an archaic definition of what masculinity is or what a leader is. It takes extreme vulnerability to sit there in an interview and express that you have some, because you're looked at, like a lot of quarterbacks are looked at, especially a black quarterback, looked at as a hero to a lot of younger people. And mm-hmm. there is a stereotype to fit a certain, to be a certain way. And mm-hmm. Dak took the opportunity after being silent for months, because his brother passed away in April, to sit there and open up about his own struggles. That takes strength, that takes vulnerability, mm-hmm. and that takes leadership. And the Mm -hmm. fact that Skip Bayless is going to diminish that because he doesn't quite understand what it is to go through depression and how that can debilitate someone and affect them is the most ridiculous thing that I have ever heard him say. And I couldn't believe that he did it. He knew what he was about to say was extremely detrimental, extremely hurtful and uh, to a huge group of people. And the fact that we've talked about it on this show, you've been very open about your own journey with this. 
The fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic and so many people have been affected by it in various ways, but mental health is something that hasn't been talked about as much, that is at an all time high, especially due to the pandemic, that he would make such a ridiculous comment. I, I, I like could I, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't hmm. believe it. Uh, and I hope this doesn't affect Dak or anybody I hope else. I hope him. anybody else can see through how ridiculous this is. And you right. don't take this to be truthful in any way. You mentioned a word in there. You said a word. The word is hero. Hero, right? Mm -hmm. hero. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. What is the most important thing Superman ever said? I don't, I don't know don't anything know. Do Superman you know why? ever said. Do you know why? Why? Because Superman's never said anything important. Right. Oh, so, okay. so here's the deal. Oh, Superman's never said anything important okay. because Superman is suffering from hero's disease. Mm. See, heroes don't say things. Heroes do things. Right. Let's okay. say that Superman, I made this analogy on a different podcast. Let's say Superman goes in, saves a bunch of people from a volcano. Right. Okay. And after he saves all the people from the volcano, he lands. And when he lands, he says, hey. I've saved all these people from the volcano, okay? But just to let you guys know, probably shouldn't have had to save these people from the volcano. It's your fault. Right? Number one, you guys are doing a lot of fracking around here, fucking with shit. Uh, the volcano is going, making the volcano go crazy, all right? Number two, probably shouldn't have even been here in the first place because this is uh, an indigenous land. This is indigenous land and uh, and... You guys probably shouldn't even be here. The lava should be able to flow everywhere. People have been, the people have been respecting this spot for a long time. You guys build condominiums here. Now I got to fly over here, save a bunch of people. Don't do this anymore. Move everything, whatever. You know what starts happening from the crowd? Fuck you, Superman. <laughs> we didn't ask you for what you thought. Blah, 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 blah. Superman, what are you talking about? You're so big and strong. Why, why do we have to listen to what's going on in your brain and what's happening with you? Come over here. Save the people from the fucking volcano. All right? That's your job, big, strong Superman. Save people from the volcano. All right? When, you're, when, when people have worshipped you the way that they worship Dak Prescott for one part of who you are, they dehumanize you in every other way. You're not known for being a person who has a brother who died. You're known for being on a fucking football field for somebody's entertainment. Let's do that again, people. Football is for fun, okay? Yeah. It's entertainment, all right? It's for fun, okay? He lost his brother, all right? He's talking about being depressed because people around him are dying. Society is caving in on itself. And this fucking douchebag is talking about what it means to be the leader of a fucking football team. Here's the deal. I want these athletes to know something. I'm not going to mince words when I'm talking about it. Brothers, these white folks don't give a fuck about you. Mm. They don't care whether or not your brother dies. They don't care whether or not you wake up depressed. They don't care whether or not you can't sleep. They don't care whether or not you can't eat. They make their money talking fucking shit about you. And what they want is for you to perform so they can make more money talking more shit about you. Mm -hmm. What Skip Bayless said wasn't offensive. It wasn't inappropriate. It was subhuman. He's slime. Does anybody know what it feels like not to be able to close your eyes and go to sleep? Does anybody know what it feels like to feel like you're going to die every second of the day? Do you understand what it means to be in a place where the air is heavy, where you can't breathe, where you're looking around going, yo, did it even make sense for me to be born if this is what life is? Does anyone know what that is? And if you felt that, and you understood that, how on God's green earth could you then turn around and talk about what it means to lead a fucking football team? It's for fun. Doesn't mean we don't love it. Doesn't mean it isn't cool to watch. 
Doesn't mean it isn't a lifestyle for some people. Doesn't mean it isn't some people's life work. It's for fun. Yeah. It's entertainment. He was depressed. He lost a family member. If you can't take your foot off, your skeleton, ridiculously wrinkled foot off, (laughs) the fucking hyperbole gas for one second to let somebody else be vulnerable, if you can't access someone else's humanity enough to allow them to feel in public and feel full, when Dak Prescott is saying that, do you know what that is? Can I tell you guys something? I'm going to be honest about something. When I share about depression or when Dak Prescott shares, when anybody shares, do you know what you share to let people know not only did I make it through this, which is telling somebody else, hey, I went through this and I can come back and do a podcast. I went through this. I can come back and throw a touchdown. I went through this. I can come back and just live so you can do it too. Do you know what else you like to hear in those moments? You like to hear, hey, Dak, don't die. Mm. Hey, Van, don't die. That's what you like to hear. And the reason why you like to hear that is because you might be in that position again. Mm -hmm. And when Dak Prescott is in that position again, God forbid if he is, but if he is in that position again, think of how fucking sick and evil it would be for him to be considering whether or not he's the CEO of the Dallas Cowboys. When he's sitting in a place thinking about how he's going to make it to the next day, think about how crazy it would be for him to think that even though I am hurting and full of pain, I can't show it because I have to play football. What he should be thinking about is there are people who love me. Mm -hmm. There are people who need me. I want to survive for them and for myself. Right. What he does so that Skip Bayless can watch a football game or so that the Cowboys can be a winning team shouldn't be a component because it shouldn't be enough to keep him alive. Mm -hmm. They take these brothers, they take these sisters, they take these athletes, and they reduce them to box scores, to stat Mm -hmm. lines, and to Nike commercials. And any time one of them says, hey, I'm a person too, shut up, nigga. Shut up, bitch. Hit the ball. Throw the ball. Run. You got football games to go win. This is why you're alive. I guarantee you Dak Prescott's not alive just to play football. He's alive right. to be Dak Prescott. And being and playing football is a part of being Dak Prescott. Couldn't mm-hmm. be more offended. Couldn't be more offended offended, couldn't be angrier with this. Anger. Livid about it. Everybody got to make shows, man. I've been on TV. I didn't say shit. I didn't say shit to get it popping. I get it. Be a person, dog. Skip. Skip. Bro, be a person, man. Seriously. Be a person. Like, try. Let me ask you this. Um, also, extremely powerful what you just said, and it like truly resonated. And I really hope people take what you just said, like pass it on, let people know because you really dissected everything that Skip said in that statement, and and it really took it to another level. And I'm as I'm sitting here listening to you, and I'm and I'm, I'm feeling every single thing that you're saying. I'm wondering because I didn't watch it live. I saw it go viral. What was Shannon Sharp's response? I didn't see it. I was too. I got. I had to take it off. You know why? I, you know. I, no, you know why? I, I watched the clip. In order to do this, you know why I had to step away from it. Why? I had to step away from it because what just happened and how upset I just got. Yeah. That's destabilizing, and then that can put me back there. Right. Well, I just and I, and I understand that, and I'm and I. We had to do this topic because, like, I yeah, honestly, honestly, Van, honestly, Van, when I saw it, I thought about you because you have been so open about what you go through. And I just thought about someone who has struggled with this for someone to just dismiss it in such a disgusting way. How does that feel? I honestly didn't even want to respond to this. I wanted to say, how does that make you feel? So once again, thank you. 
for putting yourself out there and being open and honest with that, because I know there are other people who are just as angry as you're expressing. And that's why I'm asking like for Shannon, I don't even know how you sat there and you're a football player. You know it. You've been subjected to this mentality that you're speaking about, you, Van, were speaking about. How did he sit there and let this white man say this to him, knowing that he's been through some of these same things? Maybe he hasn't experienced depression, but he knows what it is to be a black athlete. He was in the league for years. I, I don't know how he didn't just get up and walk away from the table. I don't know. I don't know if they went to commercial break. I don't know if that was the end of the show. I don't know. But I don't know how you sat there and looked that man in the eye after he made that ludicrous comment. It is, to me, like, we have to understand, or maybe we don't. I have to understand that almost all the trauma that any oppressed people, any group of people has ever felt has come from their dehumanization. Okay. Dak Prescott's a human being. He's a dude. He's a bro. He's a man. He's a god. He's a homo sapien. All right. I know it doesn't seem like it, guys. I know it seems like you run fast or ball fast, get hit by a 330-pound guy, get right back up. I know that seems superhuman. And I know it seems like he, you know, things bounce off him. He's impervious to things. He can do things you can't imagine doing, but I guarantee you he's a person. And it's not just him. It's the, your neighbor that you only know because their dog is barking loud. There's a person in there. The dude that lives down the block that you only ever see because he's revving the engine of his car. It's a human being. The lady that you see like on Instagram, putting all of her pictures up, going all over the world, doing all of that stuff like that. Seems like it's not a person. It's a person. Everybody just people. So we can try, we can choose to uh, sum people up and reduce people to what we think it is they do and who we think it is they are. Or when someone is in pain, we can step back, drop that, drop, drop everything, every preconceived notion that we have about them for a second and allow themselves a safe space, a safe bed to land on, feathery bed to land on and let them express their pain and tell them that for at least one second, we're willing to uh, accept their vulnerability and maybe even feel their pain with them. So they feel like they're a part of something so that they're not alone somewhere figuring out how to deal with something. The reason why this is so offensive to me is because like Dak Prescott didn't share this and didn't ask if it was okay with Skip Bayless. He shared it for people who might be going mm -hmm. through this. And Skip Bayless cast himself in the role of villain by doing what he did. Yeah. It's too far. Guys, their lines, their limits. Look, you hate LeBron James, that's fine. You hate Luka Doncic, that's fine. Every time some one of these guys does something, you want to get on them and jump on them. You want to talk shit to one of the most stand-up fucking guys in the entire league that we have, Damian Lillard. You want to shit on Damian Lillard, literally one of the best guys in all of sports. Fine. Do your thing. Skip Bayless went too fucking far. Yeah. He went too far. To me, I think he's putting his life in danger. I think when you, well, I think when Skip Bayless says stuff like that and those things start to echo and you start to hear, is Dak soft? Is Dak ready for it? Is Dak this? I don't want to yeah. hear about your depression. When you give, you put that man's life in danger. Yeah. So uh, couldn't be more disgusted. We'll never watch Undisputed again. Every time I see like Skip Bayless's face, look, I, I like all the bullshit. Like, I love the funny shit. I love it. I love the crazy shit, man. I love the the uh, like all the shit that people got to do. I've done the shit. We've all done it, yeah. right? Not all of us, but I've like not this though. This is too much. Yeah, agree. This is too much. So you know, I won't be on Undisputed anytime soon. Not that I would have been before. Didn't but, watch uh, it anyway. Yeah, go fuck yourself, Skabets. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, I'm sorry for the anger, everyone. The angry I'm mad. I'm mad. Should I eat a cracker? Hold on. Wow. They, don't, they don't want me. Look, I got saltine crackers. Look at this. Mm. Well, you could just mm. do what I'm doing. What are you doing? You're drinking a wine? Yeah. Just, just is that, is that wine or is that, a, is that a white claw? It's not a white claw. 
I've never had white. white I've never had white claw, but I hear I like see all my social media influencer friends using it. I hear it's good. You white like it? Claw, yeah, white claw is the mm. white claw is the only thing that white people have done right in a long time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's true. Cause everything, every every other thing that we could point to recently that white people have really been a part of, like the things that we thought were dope. It all comes back and fucks us up, right? We thought Tesla's were dope. Elon Musk fucking crazy. We thought Facebook was dope. Ah! The thought, only time they're dope is during our unexpected ally of the week. Yeah, they're dope then. Right? But For like, a week. But until the White Claw people, I don't even know who they are, but I'm assuming that they're white because they put alcohol and seltzer. Watch which, them have some type of problematic past, though. Watch them be linked to something. Watch support them support Trump. <laughs> why, 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 like, like White Claw. Skip Bayless owns a piece of it. <laughs> Watch. Skip Bayless. Oh, you know, White Claw was my guy. But for right now, for right now, White Claw. The I'm only go whites. Like, I'm going oh, to drink, drink it on the show. Next time we, next time we do it, I'm going to drink it on the show. Yeah, we, we angling hard, hard for that ad right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, looking at the, the looking at my Roly or my Fitbit, it's about that time for mailbag. Woo! It's mailbag time, guys. <laughs> All right. So, Jordan, the brilliant, whenever you are ready. First, I have a quick uh, fact check for you guys. Casper oh. died of pneumonia, which I think is not what you said. That's even fucking sadder. <laughs> by the way, uh, wait, by the way, wait. by the way, that's even sadder, by the way. Was he a child, though? But Jordan, was he a yeah, child? Yeah, he was a kid. He was a child. He was a right. child. No, so I, I'm, think about I'm talking that. to Jordan. I'm talking to Jordan. She's no, fact checking no, us right th- now. Think about that shit. A, ki- a dead kid of pneumonia. Dead kid That's of pneumonia. That's tragic. Like, what? How? Who came up with that story? That well, did not of, happen in the cartoon. It did it, not happen. But, but you know what? In the cartoon, we weren't even thinking about the fact there was a dead kid playing with other kids. What's sadder than that? Casper he was lonely. Goes, he was lonely. Uh, yeah. But I don't think I knew Casper was a child. I didn't think I didn't give him an age. Well, he was just you, a ghost. I was realize, a child. I was a kid. Come on now. It you, wasn't that deep, man. It wasn't realize, that deep. But do you realize how much more creepier it would have been if Casper was a grown ass man? He didn't that have. Came he was. Back he was. He didn't have an age to be with kids. Okay. Do you age all car? Do you age all dead? cartoons? How old are the Care Bears? How old are the Smurfs? They were little babies. Other, other than, the Care Bears. No, you don't know. Like, no, you like, don't know. The, the Smurfs were grown though. Hey, the Smurfs Only were grown. Only Papa Smurf. Only nah, Papa Smurf. Nope, nope, nope. The Smurfs were in their twenties. How, the how, how old? How old were, were the were the little things in Fraggle Rock? We don't know. That's they were grown too. They we're aging ourselves Smurfs, with these cartoons. The Smurfs were grown, though. I'm not, I know that the Smurfs were grown because I know. No, you don't, man. Yeah, they were. The Smurfs you were grown. Don't. It was some funny shit going on with the Smurfs, man. We all know that. It was some funny shit going on. The Smurfs kept. Here's the deal. They kept being more Smurfs. But yeah, they only, keep one, only, only one lady. Only one lady. That's all I'm saying. So the Smurfs were grown. It's like, it's some Smurfs. It's some, we got questions about the Smurfs, man. We got questions about. The Smurfs is all I'm going to say. All right, uh, Casper, that's some weird shit. Jordan, mailbag, what's up? Do either of you anticipate any prominent NFL players pulling a Jonathan Isaac and declaring they won't show support for Black Lives Matter during the national anthem? I mean, I think so. I mean, I think it's, yeah, you mean, we, I, I'm assuming we're being prominent black players. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be some. I mean, they're, 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 they're definitely going to be some uh, that are going to do it. And by the way, that's their right. You know, that, that, that's their right. Like we, they, no one should ever feel unfairly compelled to be a part of something. doesn't matter what it is. If it doesn't speak to you, it doesn't speak to you. I can have my opinions on that, but that's their right. But so I'm, I'm sure somebody will do it. See, I don't know if I think that someone's going to be as outspoken as he mm-hmm. was. I mean, he was questioned, whatever, I get it. But I think you'll have more of a response like a, like a Dak who said, it's up to people. Each player should be able to do what it is that they want to do and express, you know, their support or not how they want to do it. I think mm. that's more of what we'll see rather than maybe an outright person say, I'm not doing it. Right. No, I get that. I, yeah. Yeah. You know, we talked earlier about people being human and humans have a lot of, you know, different dimensions to them. And I don't necessarily think 
that an athlete that doesn't cho- choose a specific way of making themselves useful, that there's anything necessarily wrong with it. If you don't want to kneel, I, w- I just wonder, my question is, what are you doing? If you're, if you're telling me that you're a Black American in this time, that Black people are being killed, and you're not prepared to do anything, now nah, you got the side eye. You feel what I'm saying? You got the side eye. But you of just said, eyes. but Van, you just said people, if it doesn't speak to you, it doesn't speak to you. So there might be people who be Black Lives Matter does not speak to them. I had a very, very interesting conversation with someone recently who, who? I'm not going to name, who Wait. is black, who I don't think it speaks to them in the se- like it does to most black people. Who is it? Put them on blast. Hmm? Put them on blast. Nope. Like, like Monique but I, but said. But my point is, is like, they're out there. There are black like, people that no. Black Lives Matter does not speak to them. No, Rachel, like Monique said, either name names or leave it on the playground. We want to know who these people are, okay? We want to know who they are. I'm pretty sure they, there have been times when you have not named things. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, Thank can you. we move on? My point is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, no, but your point is well said. Your point is well said. Your point is well said. I don't. I don't want to. I, but I, I, like, it don't it, mean I'm not going to be side eyeing them. I'm side eyeing all of them. Yeah. But I'm just. But you're right. For some people, it doesn't speak to them the same way. They don't see color. They don't see color. Even right. if they are colorful. Right. They don't see color, but they always stop at red lights. It's weird to me. Right. Like they see. They don't see color. Mm. But when the light turns red, they can stop. When it turns mm. green, they go. But. Niggas getting shot by the cops all of a sudden. Oh, I'm colorblind. Jordan, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question from Caitlin Elliott. What suggestions do you have for a teacher wanting to really dive into Black history with middle schoolers? Mm. I mean... That's a good question. Just, Where do you start? Well, just I know what, do it, first of I, all. You know, I mean, you know what I'd say? You know what I'd what? say? Teach the 1619 Project. Oh, that's great. That's mm-hmm. perfect. That's perfect. Because it's like, all laid out for you. The curriculum's yep. already there. So yep. that's easy for you to do. Mm-hmm. And it starts at the beginning of right. how Black people entered this class. Perfect. That's perfect. Right. Teach that's the 1619 Project. And also, that's it's good for two reasons. Because number one, you get to teach the kids the 1619 Project. And then number two, you'll become a social media celebrity when they fire you for teaching the 1619 <laughs> Project. Um, but I would say, seriously, uh, there's a lot of different people and a lot of super amazing uh black americans black people black people all over the world that you could that you, you know you could start this off with but if you start off with the 1619 project you have a comprehensive view of history the history of black americans and how it intertwines with american history that's really no no better piece of uh, uh no better piece of of journalism on the subject so I'd say teach that. Next question. From Chris Floyd. How do you deal with friends that constantly complain about issues facing the Black community or slam prominent Black figures for not doing more for the Black community, but they themselves never take action? Do you call them out on the hypocrisy or try to encourage them to do more? You do both. (laughs) You do both. You Mm got to cut, like... If you're not going to do anything about it, you can't just sit there and complain, right? Like we can't stay in a place where all we're doing is ragging on people because they're not doing a good enough job. You have got like when you yourself can get out and do your own thing, you can use your platform. You don't have to have a big platform to do something, to be involved. There are so many ways that you can get involved rather than using your social media platform or criticizing those who you don't feel like are using it properly. So first call them out on their hypocrisy because that's exactly what they are, a hypocrite. But then encourage them to do something, but also try to do something with them, right? So this person, Chris Floyd writing, I don't know if you're doing your own thing, but lead by example, but then also encourage them, maybe encourage them to get out and do things with you. Hmm. That's great. That's great advice. Also, I I say this all the time and I hate to keep going back to the well, but you know, sometimes fuck them. Like I remember when I worked at TMZ, right? You know, I like, I like to learn new things, right? So I, 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 when I worked at TMZ, you know, I would come there sometimes, I would bring my bag because I would be leaving and going straight to boxing, right? And I would box. Or, I, you know, I would play basketball, do all of that stuff like that. But and, and it was always people in there that, you know, would have some shit to say. 
It was very weird. Like people would always have some little shit to say about you. Wait, in TMZ or boxing? No, at TMZ. Boxing, like when you step in the ring, everybody's got respect. TMZ would be like, ah, you can't box. You can't fight. Yeah, but you can't do this. Van thinks he's a boxer, blah, 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 blah. And you know what I started saying to them? Started saying, hey, you know what? Lace them up. Get in the ring. I'll like, I'll like, seriously, you know what? Fine, fuck it. I can't buy, like, you talk shit to me, like, come do something. Lace it up, get in the ring. Let's, let's go. Let's go for a little while. Let's see. And if I can't box, you'll expose me. And if you're just a shit talker and a contrarian and a negative person, then you'll be exposed. Now, here's the thing. Do you think anybody ever boxed me or played basketball with me or did any of those things? No, they didn't. You know why? Because they, they don't want to do, like, the hardest thing for somebody who ain't doing shit to see is somebody else who's doing shit. Mm-hmm. Projection. Like, is, is there, you, like, like hey, you can't do nothing. Nah, actually, you can't do anything. And also, if you think that somebody else isn't doing it enough, feel the space. Feel the space. Right. Feel right. the space. If I start talking about your boxing skills, you're going to tell me to lace up and get in the ring? Let's go. All right. I'm in L.A. Let's now. Let's go. Let's go. No, I can't do that. You, you don't know, know what these know, private school kids you know can do. You know what's going to happen? This is what's going to happen. I'm going to be all ready to box you. And then all of a sudden, Brian going to walk out in slow-mo. And I'm going to be like, shit. <laughs> now I got to fight Roberto Duran. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I, was, I was ready for some easy work. But shit, now, whoa, so now it's gonna be that you want you say and he's gonna be pointing at me with his glove like you called out the love of my life. I'm ready to do battle. <laughs> Don't do not do a Brian impersonation, <laughs> please. <laughs> what else, George? Last question. Okay. What pop culture are you guys taking in? Has your intake changed since quarantine started? Movies, TV shows, podcasts, etc. Uh mine has just because I have <laughs> Your face. I'm like, well, I don't know why you make this face. Mine has because I started a new job with extras. So there are certain topics and stories that we cover that I probably wouldn't be. Your face. Everybody watch this. Make sure y'all watch our podcast on Spotify. Well, I don't know why you're making that face, but uh, the the some of the stories I cover, I probably wouldn't normally or yeah. shows I have to watch uh, because I'm interviewing someone, which I still find fascinating because it's something new to me. Uh, so I, I cover the things I cover on extra are, is different to me. Mm. Yeah. Like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Completely like, different. Exactly. Like right. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I have been watching. So my watching habits have kind of gotten back to regular, which means anything that's about a cult, I'll watch it. If it's about a cult, i watch. So I've been watching The Vow on HBO about the Nexium sex cult, which is very interesting. Because, like, it's so... It, the, the interesting part about the sex cult or any sex cult like that is about how they groom the people, right? Because it's like, they... It's interesting how the roof of weirdness can get pushed up to you just all the way in the land of weirdness, right? Do they show how the people fall into the cult? They do. That's interesting because, to me. Because, like, what happens in this, this Nexium cult is that, like, it starts off as sort of a... Kind of a self-help, but more like a world help thing. Like we're mm-hmm. we're gonna be a place that's full of compassion. Hit that white claw, Rach. We're like, we're we're gonna be a place that's full of compassion that understands people. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna teach people all of these things. And then you're gonna have to wear a sash. And which is weird, right? It's weird to walk around with a sash on all the time. Right. It's just Unless a, you're Miss USA. But it's just a little weird, right? And you get stripes on the sash, right? Then all of a sudden, you're going to volleyball things in the middle of the night where everybody's playing volleyball. These All things are peculiar, but just a little peculiar, right? Then, you know, this guy kisses everybody on the mouth. Weird, but just a little weird. Nah, that's and weird. The, and the weird just gets turned up. So all of a sudden, these ladies tonight. are like in this, this this one lady, this is the top part of it where like you have to take a vow and give collateral. Collateral, you have to, you have to give them secrets about yourself. Then all Sounds of a sudden, like Scientology. It's kind of that way. Then all of a sudden, before you know it, you're you're naked in front of this what? room. That's a and huge like, jump. No, I'm serious. It, it, that it, it is, but that's the way it happens. <laughs> These women were getting branded, and one of the best ones is like cues. <laughs> yeah, like cues. <Q's. laughs> <Q's. laughs> they were getting branded, and one of the best ones is one of the guys. His wife 
was got to be a part of the vow, the like DOS, the highest level of Nexium or whatever, right? That like like that, right? And they branded her. And after a while, she told him what was going on. And you can hear him, the phone, the calls recorded. He's talking to this lady and he's like, yo, did you brand my fucking wife? And I'm like, think of how wild that question is. <laughs> think about the Why question. Why wasn't in a he with her? Because they weren't allowed to tell the men. Oh no. I They're just don't, I don't to... understand how we get here. Because because what they because they show it's all on tape, Rachel. They show the lady saying I'm watching saying, it. I'm watching it's, it. Tonight. It's all on tape. They they show the lady saying, Hey, just to let you know, uh, some of the men aren't gonna get this. They're not gonna understand this. They're gonna run into white knighted, but this is a higher level of commitment, a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of this, and this is what you have to do for. And this lady goes, before I know it, I'm blindfolded. I wake up, everybody in the room is naked, and they've got like a soldering iron out. No. And they're branding people. No. And so, yeah, so I've been watching that. I've been watching a HBO show called Raised by Wolves, which is HBO Max, just a fucking freaky ass show about the future and all that. And something I've started to watch that is currently the best thing that we've watched here at our apartment called Club Relax. It is Cobra Kai. No, I'm not watching that. Brian tried Cobra to get me to watch Kai that. I'm not. It is doing... amazing. Are you ready for this? Oh, Are you excuse ready? me. By the way, not, not, not just Cobra Kai. It's a tie for amazing. Cobra Kai and Lovecraft Country. I Lovecraft can't, Country okay, is can we fan, talk about that fantastic. For a Lovecraft I can't Country is amazing. A, no, I've tried to. Oh, so I keep hearing about Lovecraft Country. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to watch it. Mm hmm. I couldn't get past the first episode. Do I need to? Do I need to give it another one? Does it get better in the second one? I didn't. I like. I didn't it. understand I like what I was show. watching. Is it a? So then I started googling it. I'm like, is it a scary movie? Is it scary? Is it a it mystery? Is, is it? It's like okay. a world. You have to buy into the fact that the world has magic in it, magic and creatures and shit. Like okay, that. see, that's where because I'm like, what is this map? Why is there a demon? What you know, like. I wanted to watch it, I guess, for the historical context of it. And then I realized, okay, that's not what this is really about. Why don't you try to do something called paying attention to the show? You're right. Because they a lot of times. Oh. Okay. No, you're right. You're right. right. You know how they call you three screens van? I'm like, right. I'm like, I can't just sit and watch. I like mm -hmm. background. I like to be doing other things. So this is a this is a show where I have to be dedicated. Okay. Gotta pay attention. Cause you're gonna look up again. and you're gonna be like, you're gonna, they're gonna go from Chicago, right? To rural where and you're gonna That's be what like, happened. They why, were in that why restaurant. are they why, yeah, why are they running from fucking monsters and white yeah. people and stuff like that? So, okay, yeah. so all right, I'll give it, give I'll, it another I'll chance. give it a go. But, but I knew but you then, were gonna say that, by the way. What? Lovecraft pay Country. Attention. Lovecraft no, Country, great show. No, I knew you were gonna name that one. Great, great show. But yeah, so basically I'm watching stuff again, uh, and trying to stay away from all the bad news and stuff like that. So getting the loss in some other worlds is pretty cool. All right, that is it. For Mailbag, Jordan, thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Um, thank you more than anything for talking about Casper and really how fucked up that shit is. It's fucked up shit. Also for fact-checking him because he was wrong. Whatever. <laughs> he died as a kid, which is all fucked up. Um, do you have an unexpected ally? This one was tough for me. I, I really didn't. And then I was like, man, I didn't have one last week. I got I to gotta come better this week. I would have given it to Robert. Woodward, but mm -hmm. I have an issue that he sat on this for, for like six, seven months. Oh, do we need to go? We completely, I know, but I just completely like, gloss over. It. We, we'll we talk about, we talk about other heavy. Yeah, I can't give like, it to him because I have a huge issue with that. Why we got to right. keep waiting for books to come out for people to speak up? It just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, it does financial sense, right. but I have a huge issue with that. So I couldn't give it to him. I think I'm going to give it to the Kardashians. Because their show is over. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'll just, and I don't, I don't hate on them. I don't have like a huge issue, but oh, 20 seasons is God. a long time. It's enough. And mm. it's the end of an era. And I think it's a good thing. So, and I had no idea this was happening. So they are my unexpected allies of the week for putting a pin in it, for closing a chapter. So I'm sure there'll be reruns on reruns on reruns. Cause I feel like it's the only thing that comes on E but I am, I'm happy that it's over. You're happy that it's over. So you're happy it's, it's done, it's finished, and the Kardashians have made their first uh, appearance on Unexpected Ally of the Week. Well, mm -hmm. 
Uh, I got I got to be honest with you. I don't really have an unexpected out of the week this week. Uh, it's okay. I didn't have one last week. I I I looked around. I looked far and wide, and and this week I I, I couldn't find one. But I do want to say that I kind of have one. Okay. Okay. It'll cop out, but at the same time, I kind of have one. I think that a lot of our thought wars were unexpected allies. And I'll tell you how. Oh, you just suck up. Oh, yeah. mm. <laughs> That's a good save, man. Uh, yeah. That's a good oh, save. Yeah, daddy. <laughs> no father. Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You've been doing this a long time, my old father. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of our thought wars are. But seriously, though, because I am actually always floored by the amount that people are still willing to learn. I am a 40-year-old man, jaded in a lot of my ways in terms of um, uh, my beliefs about race and society. And I didn't realize that there were this many people who were still seeking a, a, a greater understanding and who wanted to be on the right side of history as it relates to uh, Black American social, economic, um, uh, and... I guess, political justice. I did not know that. I did not know that you guys were out there because I don't focus on you guys. I focus on, you know, uplifting my people, but it's good to see that you guys are out there. I will say this though, actions. We need action. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, jaded guys like me, we got to look and see somebody in the foxhole next to us. That's how we believe that these allies are true allies and not just allies for one week. Now, Rachel, what are you getting into this weekend? Oh, my little sister's coming in town, which I said on the last podcast. Little sister. So I'm just getting ready for her. Also, shout out to Adam. Got to film another episode of Ghosted this weekend. Oh, Make sure. Got to exploit some more people. <laughs> right. I just knew Adam was going to be in the mailbag as well. But, you right. know, you know, shout out to him. I, I'm just, I'm working this weekend. I'm working. Working this weekend. Oh, I, in, in addition to Thought Warriors, it's so great when I meet them out. Because I'm like, wow, you know, you guys are listening. Like you said, you're learning, you're engaged. I want to give a shout out to the young brother that I met right before I left Miami, who was working for the College Football Playoff Foundation. He was from New Orleans. So he told me to give mm. you a shout out, Van. Right. Um, and he's I'm very encouraging. There, but, yeah. but, you know, Southern Louisiana. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, stop. But he was he's from New Orleans. I know you're not from there. And he wasn't saying you're from there. But anyways, mm -hmm. shout out to him because he was very encouraging and, you know, was giving us a lot of support to keep doing what we're doing. Yo, we love you Wait, guys. Wait, what are you doing this weekend? Stop. Oh, what am I Wait. doing this weekend? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm just chilling, man. Chilling. Might okay. hit the road with the fellas. You know what I'm saying? Just like, but just chilling. It's a, it's a, it's a, I'm still trying to get the apartment together. So that's still coming together. I but yeah, just you. chilling. Just chilling. You look like you got all your shit done. I've been, I, yeah, but I, I'm still waiting on more boxes to come. None of my personal stuff has made it here. I'm living out mm. of a suitcase. Just mm. furniture set, set up. Yeah. Uh, all right, look, uh, that's it. Uh, you guys, fuck Skip Bayless. Um, <laughs> that's it for higher learning. You guys can take your, take your thinking caps off. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. If you yes. are in Los Angeles, Southern California, period, be careful outside. If you're running or doing anything, that air is nasty. So be careful out there. Oh, uh, by the way, before we get out of here, we uh, just want to take the time to acknowledge yep. that this podcast is coming out tomorrow on September 11th, September 11th, which was, uh, oh my God, one of the single most frightening days in the history of my life and also one of the sadder days in the history of our nation. I would just like to say uh, to people who I know, because I know people who lost people during 9-11, the people who I don't know, uh, we will take time tomorrow and just remember Absolutely. what it was like, what it was like for the people that were in those buildings, what it was like for the people on those planes, and what it was like for the servicemen and women who mm -hmm. then, on the backs of that, had to go out and do their duty. So yes. didn't want to leave without saying, hey, uh, we realize, we take, we, 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 we remember, and... Despite whatever ramifications were around it, politically, socially, whatever, we will never forget the people who lost their lives on that. Absolutely. Peace.